General Tadda Sabiru. He was an Ethiopian general of the Ethiopian Imperial Army, an Oromo nationalist, initially a strong proponent of Ethiopian unity. Tadis eventually became an activist for the empowerment of the Oromo people. In the 1960s, his advocacy turned into a repeated attempt to overthrow the government through a coup and later through a military rebellion. He was eventually captured and executed by the Derg regime. Today he is considered by money to be the father of modern Oromo nationalism. Tadda Sabiru was born in Salale, in the Shawa province of Ethiopian Empire, during Emperor Haile Selassie's reign. His father Biru was killed by poison gas during the Second Italian-Ethiopian War, and his mother died of grief three months later. Left without a family, Tadda joined his uncle Beka as a member of a guerrilla army of Ethiopian patriots who fought Italian occupation. He was eventually captured and sentenced to life in prison with hard labor in Mogadishu, Somalia, where he remained until the British captured Mogadishu in 1940. Tadisa was freed and given a military training in Kenya and returned to Ethiopia in 1941. In 1942, he was promoted to the rank of a second lieutenant and enrolled into the National Military Academy at Holota, where he served for seven years as an instructor. In 1954, he was promoted to lieutenant colonel and he moved from the military to the police force and was in charge of modernizing it. He was made a commander of Fatno Darash. Special Force. The Ethiopian Special Force was an instrumental in crushing the attempted 1960s coup by proving the conspirators wrong through his loyalty to the emperor. It was also as a commander of the Fethno Darash that he trained Nelson Mandela, the South African anti-apartheid activist in a guerrilla warfare. It was him who gave, who gave Mandela his famous last Nelly Leaf pistol. Tadisa Biru was promoted to a brigade general in early 1953, by which time he was a commander of the Fethno Darash, the deputy commissioner of the National Police Force. commander of the Territory Army and the chairman of the National Literacy Campaign. Despite initially rejecting the nationalist sentiments that existed among his people, the Oromo, General Tadda Sabiru's view were changed during a talk with the Prime Minister Alilu Habawurd, a chairman of the National Literacy Campaign. Tadisa held a meeting with the Prime Minister during which Akalu, not knowing Tadisa Biru's heritage, suggested that it was unwise to educate or recruit Oromos to the military. This is the comment that is believed to have influenced the general's decision to join Macha and Tulama, a self-help 
Association in early 1963, an almost social movement in which he went on to become a prominent figure. His public image helped elevate the association's status. His organizational capacity and leadership qualities transformed the self-help organization into Pan Oromo Movement. Through the organization, Tadesibiru advocated the empowerment of Oromos through education and emphasis on self-reliance. Following his example, many Oromo military officers, civilian officials, professional elites, businessmen, religious leaders joined the association. Many of these people had hidden the fact that they were Oromo before joining the association. And joining it was seen as a reaffirmation of identity. Tell me, tell me pretty lies, look me in the face, tell me that you love me.